Welcome to my weekly news bulletin. One of the biggest stories this week that's hashtagging all over the place is the launch of the World of Stonehenge exhibition at the British Museum. It looks amazing, so whoever's in London, enjoy it. I'm also excited about the discovery in Jordan of a Neolithic ritual site with standing stones. The way the hunters seem to have linked their daily economic life with symbolism and ritual is really interesting. I guess in the Neolithic period, the line between the sacred and the secular wasn't as defined as it is today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number one, Bronze Age goddess figurine may or may not have been a type of weight. A recent article published in the Prehistorische Zeitschrift called Worship or Wait, a Bronze Age goddess with a necklace from River Tollens, has sparked a new discussion on theories around the role played by bronze figurines in the region. The authors analysed an artefact recovered from the river running through the Tollens Valley in 2020. This object has been dated to the Late Bronze Age and is 14.7 centimetres high, with looped arms, breasts, a necklace, and a belt. Its attributes are similar to other bronze figurines found in Scania and Zealand. Researchers have put forward the idea that such figurines could depict goddesses and may have been ritually deposited in water as votive offerings. However, it's also possible they acted as weights for use in trade, a theory suggested in the 1990s. The figurine found in the River Tollens was close to an important crossing point made of a wooden causeway, an area where a much earlier violent conflict is known to have taken place. The authors of the paper suggest that this figurine may have been ritually deposited to commemorate the dead from that earlier disaster. Number two, archaeologists find evidence of Neolithic ear surgery. A Neolithic school dating back to 5,300 years has been discovered with cut marks that seem to indicate ear surgery. Researchers publish their study of the school in scientific reports and conclude that it's likely a mastoidectomy was carried out on the individual when she was alive. The skull was excavated from the Dolmen de El Pendon in Burgos, Spain in 2016, along with many other skeletal remains belonging to almost 100 people. The researchers suggest that the individual, a middle-aged female, suffered from otitis media and mastoiditis and that the surgery took place to relieve pressure on their ear canal. Number three, the World of Stonehenge exhibition now live at the British Museum. The World of Stonehenge exhibition is now live and features 430 artefacts. It runs until July at the British Museum in London. The Daily Mail reports that around two-thirds of these objects have been lent to the museum and come from other parts of the UK, as well as Europe. Many have never been on display in the UK before. Some of the artefacts are very well known, such as the Nebra Sky Disc from Germany and Seahenge from Norfolk. The story of Stonehenge is also being told at the exhibition. Other artefacts include the chalk drum found in a Neolithic children's burial in Burton Agnes, the Schifferstadt gold hat from Germany, and a Bronze Age gold cape discovered in Flintshire in Wales. Number four, wooden phallic figurines dating to the Bronze Age travel from Hull to London. The Ruskar figurines, normally on display at the Hull and East Riding Museum, have travelled to London for the World of Stonehenge exhibition. Discovered in the village of Rus in Holderness, the Bronze Age figurines are carved out of yew wood with detachable phallic organs and quartzite stone eyes. A serpent-style carved boat, a box and various other objects were also found with the figures. In Victorian times, the wooden genitals were moved to the shoulders of the figurines to hide their phallic nature. These were then fixed back into their original locations during conservation works 150 years later. It's thought the figurines were offerings to deities or ancestors. Since they were found in blue clay, it's been suggested they were deposited ritually in or near water. Several similar artefacts have been found in Britain and Ireland. Number five, Neolithic shrine discovered in Jordan. On Tuesday, Jordan's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities announced an important discovery made during the final digging season of 2021. A Neolithic ritual site dating back to 7000 BCE was found by Jordanian and French archaeologists in Jordan's eastern desert, 
and was located near Neolithic trapping structures which were designed to direct wild gazelles into a stone-lined enclosure. The shrine is made up of two standing stones with anthropomorphic carvings and a depiction of the gazelle trap, as well as an altar and seashells. A hearth and a small model of the trap were also excavated from the site. It's thought the area was inhabited by hunters whose spiritual practices were closely linked with their daily activities. Number six, analysis of Bronze Age lead ingots casts light on trade routes. A paper has recently been published in the Journal of Archaeological Science Reports which details a new study into lead ingots found during dives in Caesarea in the 1980s. The ingots from shipwrecks date back 3,200 years and bear Cipro-Minoan etchings. An isotopic analysis revealed that the lead ingots originated in Sardinia, which was unexpected since Cyprus's trade routes at the time mainly incorporated the Levant, Anatolia, the Aegean and Egypt, and were thought to have been centred around copper production and export. The analysis shows that Cyprus played a much wider role in trade, with Cipro-Minoan markings being etched onto ingots at a mine 2,500 kilometres away in Sardinia. Further research will seek to understand who facilitated these trade networks in the late Bronze Age Mediterranean. That's it. If you enjoyed that, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Share with your friends who love ancient history. If they don't love it, share it anyway. You'll be surprised how many of my friends I've managed to get interested in this sort of thing. I'm joking. They think I'm crazy. But anyway, it's worth a try. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and posting content there regularly. Uh, I have a website which features the places that I visit, including the GPS locations. And I'm also on Patreon, so if you'd like to support me by becoming a patron, you can find the link in the description below.